know you guys have been busy. The season ends with Purdue. Recruiting didn't start then. It continued then, and you guys have been on the pass since then. Well, we sure have, John. You know, recruiting is year-round these days. Uh, I think one reason it's so exciting for for all of us in recruiting is just so much work goes into it, not just uh, our staff, but uh, really everyone involved in Indiana football. So we're thrilled to death. We signed 25 guys today. Again, guys from California, Texas, Florida, and the Midwest. So um, good recruiting class. I think a group that people are really going to enjoy getting to know and getting a chance to watch the next few years. Now, one of the things I've heard about this recruiting class is you're looking for speed. Did well, you get the speed you're looking well, for? Well, you're always looking for guys that can run, and, uh, and I think we've done that. Uh, but we've got to continually upgrade that with the way people are playing today. Um, they spread you out, the way people throw the football. And if you look at our team, the guys that play the best for us are the guys that can run. And I think a guy that you're going to see hopefully play tonight is Antoine Randallel. Uh, we'll take all the Antoine Randallels we can get. Now, he's got a slight injury problem you were telling about as well. What, what is his injury situation now? Well, first of all, he breaks his hand the first day of practice. So if we, we got to get him through the season. But I... I, I was kidding the other day. I had him in my office. I said, come in here, turn around. I'll pull those splinters out of your rear end. Because he hadn't gotten a lot of playing time. But, but uh, he'll, he'll make a contribution, I'm sure, over the next few years. And he's thrilled to be a part of this basketball program. Well, it's the leadership he brings to basketball. He brings it to football as well. Really looking forward to next year's season. Seven home games right here in Bloomington. And there's your quarterback, Antoine Randall. Thanks so much for being here, Cam. Thanks, John. When we come back, we'll have Chalk Talk with Bob Knight. In Big Ten winning streak, its largest in nearly half a century. The Badgers are the nation's third stingiest defense. No team has scored more than 58 points during their current seven-game run. The Hoosiers tallied 98 points on Sunday, but it took double overtime for them to secure the win at Penn State. A.J. Guyton hit the game winner, became Indiana's career three-point leader, and finished with a career-high 33 points. Tonight, it's the Big Ten's best defense against the league's second most potent offense. So something's got to give. You are looking live at Assembly Hall in Bloomington, Indiana, where tonight the Indiana Hoosiers try to climb back to the 500 mark in the Big Ten. If they're going to get there, they have to stop those pesky Wisconsin Badgers who put a seven-game winning streak on the line tonight. Last night, Penn State fans had their hearts broken once again as Mateen Cleaves from Michigan State hit the game winner with four-tenths of a second to go, and that kept Michigan State in the driver's seat at 8-1, Wisconsin breathing right down their necks at 7-2. Hi, everybody. Alongside the former Hoosier, John Laskowski, I'm Mike Leeson. And, John, while the Wisconsin Badgers might be the talk of the Big Ten this year, the talk among Big Ten fans this week is the double overtime win by Indiana over Penn State, where A.J. Guyton steps up not only 33 points, but also hits the game winner. Right. Indiana lost two games in a row. That would have been three. Guyton saved him. He was co-player of the week in the conference, and he's been on a streak, averaging 25 points a game in the last five for Indiana. This is the shot that won the game. Michael Lewis gets him a pass. He's way outside. He said later he was just trying to hit the rim. He hits nothing but net. And with, there was only one second left on the shot clock, four seconds on the game, and he's able to connect. For Wisconsin, Sean Mason is their leader, 18 points a game. Only two Badgers score in double figures, so they count on Mason for his scoring quite a bit. He's a senior leader that's turned this team from 3-13 and 13 in Big Ten play last year to second place. He's a great shooter on the step out. He can drive very well and dish, but he loves to step back and take that three-point shot. And now let's take a look at tonight's fueling factors brought to you by Fast Max Convenience Stores. If it's got to be fast, it's got to be max. For Wisconsin, it's team defense. They only give up 55 points a game. That's third in the nation. And they need to get to the foul line. They're 11 and 2, and they shoot 70% or better. Those are good shots when they can get to the line. For Indiana, it's Guyton and Record. They must score. Indiana's 22 and 5 when they combine for more than 30 points. Rebounding a huge night for Indiana Sunday. They got 52 rebounds, 17 more than Penn State. Since Ty Calderwood was a senior in high school, he's won 83% of his games. If the Badgers win tonight, it'll snap a 19-game losing streak. Big Ten season. And Dick Bennett in his fourth year as the head coach of the Wisconsin Badgers, 66-47. and 47. And tonight's starting lineups are brought to you by Sagamore Health Network. Caring, compassionate, 
and cost effective. As we take a look at the Wisconsin Badgers, Mike Kelly, not a lot of points, but he's averaging 2.78 steals per game, and he will spend most of the night chasing a guy by the name of A.J. Guyton. And for the Indiana Hoosiers, Luke Recker. So if A.J. Guyton and Mike Kelly neutralize each other, Luke Recker could have a career game. He could be the key to the contest tonight. And Bobby Knight, the head coach of the Indiana Hoosiers, 737 victories and 28 seasons of coaching. It's the Hoosiers and the Badgers. We're back with a tip after this. Mike Gleason Assembly Hall where the Indiana Hoosiers have won 88% of their games. And you look at the numbers over the series, John, boy, if there's any year that Wisconsin would really like to snap that 19-game skid, it would be 1999. It is 1977, the last time the Badgers have won here. Of course, these kids uh, are very young at that time, some not even born yet. But Dick Ben has done a great job with this group. They played defense. In fact, uh, Bob Knight mentioned in the paper the other day, this is the way his teams at Army used to play, just like the Badgers play. And, John, you look at uh, the 4-5 and five record for Indiana in the Big Ten, but also four of their next five games right here in Assembly Hall. All right, Indiana had six of their first nine on the road, which means five of their next seven will be at home. So Indiana has the home schedule coming down the stretch. And there's a great stat. Wisconsin leading the Big Ten in points allowed, just 56 points a game. And they win games on team defense. Number three in the country is Luke Recker. You take a look at his shatter, four stitches after getting walloped uh, at University Park on Sunday afternoon. But it was worth it as the Hoosiers snapped a skid and won in double overtime. The Wisconsin Badgers, they're kind of an enigma. You look at them, match up, and you say, well, the Wisconsin Badgers, there's no way they're going to beat this team or that team, and they just keep winning. Ty Calderwood, the last two games, 17 points, five assists. First shot picked up by Rector. Nice pass inside, and Kowski's rejected by Haston. But Kowski's there for the stick back. That'll be a good matchup. Vershaw 6-9, and he's matched up with Luke Rector, so the advantage to Wisconsin, and he got the nice pass inside. Kowski followed it up. Well, you talk about keys. You look at Vershaw and Kowski, obviously a guard-laden club. A little fadeaway turner, no good. Haston's there. And the second chance opportunity goes for Kirk Haston. He's a redshirt freshman, really having a great coming out year. The last three games for Indiana, he's averaged 15 points and eight rebounds. We are tied at two. John Mason averaging 18 points a game. He's the leading scorer on this Badger team. There's a whistle down low, and it goes against Luke Recker, the Indiana Hoosier. The men wearing the striped shirts, Ed Hightower, Dan Christman, and Mike Spanier. <laughs> Wisconsin will normally go with three guards. Indiana moves Wrecker to a four, but he's actually a guard. Let's look at the last play. And there's the foul. And Wisconsin keeps possession of the ball. Wrecker's got his hands full with Vershaw there. They're battling again under the basket. There's a reaching foul. It goes against Indiana once again. Bobby Knight's off the bench. Uh, Asking for the offensive uh, little extra activity with the uh, the left arm by Mason. And the foul goes against uh, Rob Turner. That's going to be number one on him. Two on the Hoosiers already. 18.48 to go in the first half here from Bloomington. Indiana with a quick substitution. They bring William Gladness in. 6'8 senior. And uh, Easton leaves after scoring that first pass. And Hightower calls the turnover on Sean Mason. Little stutter step on the baseline. He carried the basketball. First turnover for Wisconsin. They only had six in the last game. And Indiana now with a chance to take the lead. I think that's a call you'll see more, Mike, as the season comes down. That carrying the ball, palming the ball, I think is something the officials look at. It's become pretty common in the game. I think they're going back to studying it. Bring that one up uh, as a three for Rob Turner. His first field goal, 5-2 now Indiana. Turner, of course, had a good look at the basket at Penn State as Mason. The fadeaway three for Sean Mason. You know, the thing that makes him effective, he's got the quick release on the shot. He wasn't that open, but yet a quick release will get that shot away. And Turner with the basketball again now. That's the third time he's touched it all three times. It looked like he was at least uh, looking towards the basket. A.J. Guyton coming off the 33-point performance against Penn State. A shovel pass inside. And out and back in for Turner. So Turner's got the hot hand. Turner going against a much bigger Vershaw, and again, the quick release is what enables it. Turner's 6'4", but very strong, so he can match up well at the forward position against Wisconsin. Well, it was two years at junior college. He averaged 20 points a game. It's raining threes. Number 11, Sean Mason, back-to-back -back triples. He has six. 
Wow, what a great player for Wisconsin. It's his senior year. He's ready to go out in style, and he's doing it tonight for the Badgers. Guyton trying to break his man down off the dribble on the baseline. Guyton with the reverse, and it falls for A.J. Guyton. See, that's what makes Guyton so hard to guard. He can hit the three-pointer from the outside, but you can't play him close. He'll drive on you. He's got a nice reverse layup there. Mike Kelly, two years ago, getting a lot of playing time. Or actually, last year when Calderwood, Calderwood went down and first shot, takes a rare first-half shot, but he hits him. Wisconsin likes to score from the outside. Uh, they want Mason and Collarwood. But if you leave them open, Bershaw can score. Bring up another three for Rob Turner. That gives him eight, John. And what do they see with this Wisconsin defense? Obviously, Turner's part of that game plan. Turner's a very athletic player, the, the most athletic on the Indiana team. He comes in and really scores in spurts. He had a big game against Kentucky last year, and he's on fire tonight. Expected a defensive struggle here with the Badgers on the court. Right now it's 12-10, Indiana by two. And the high-scoring game does favor the Hoosiers. Bershaw goes high out the window. He has four. And we are tied at 12-12. What Wisconsin likes to do is run some time off that shot clock. Let it come down, which means you're going to have a slower-paced game and keep it in the 50s. Guyton just inside the arc. And Kowski clears. Kowski coming into the ball game. He did 11 rebounds for 300 in his career, the sophomore of Wisconsin. Deadlocked at 12, 5, 15, 56 to go on the first half. First shot. He wants the rock. He's going to put it up again. Misfires this time. Over the back is Andy Kowski. Guy in that inside position there. Wisconsin really looking inside. They're trying to take advantage of the first shot matchup. 15, 49 to go from Bloomington, Indiana. A.J. Guyton. We're tied at Indiana, 12. two for three. Wisconsin, a perfect two for two. Mason averaging 18. Turner comes in averaging five, but he did score 25 against Kentucky earlier this year. And as we pointed out at the top of the broadcast or earlier, he did average 20 in junior college. Record breaks his man down. Little record, 20 points, 11 rebounds his last game. That's his first part. See, that time Mason was on record. That's the height advantage to record. And so he just took it right to the baseline. 14-12, Indiana by two. Mason. Kelly, 10 assists, no turnovers in his last two games. Inside, Kelly, reverse, kisses it off the window. Well, that's the uh, Wisconsin offense we're used to. They'll run that shot clock. Indiana makes a mistake on defense. They find Kelly open inside. Guyton with the spin. And he does not get the bounce. Sam Reese Linton, the first substitution in the ball game, clears for the Badgers. Tied at 14 now. Wisconsin looking for their third 21 season in the history of the school. They've got it the 12 non-conference victories. Most in school history. The last time they had 20 in Madison was back in the 1940-41 season. Before that, back in 1915-1916. Ten seconds on the shot clock. Nobody likes to play a lot of defense, Mike, and that's what Wisconsin forces his opponents to do. Inside with two on the shot clock, Rucker comes away with it. Hoosiers with a chance. Turner with a Larry Bird type of move underneath. And then when Indiana gets the ball, they'll come down and try to score quickly. They average 75 points a game, and that's how they do it. Rucker brings it right down. He's got his head up. Finds Turner. Tough shot, though, as he tried to reach back for that layup. And a foul called. Mason picks up his first. Correct me if I'm wrong, John. Now, Rob Turner, obviously, you just said that he's one of the better athletes on the club, but every time I watch Indiana, I've never seen him look for a shot as much as tonight. He is. He's one of those streak shooters, and when a streak shooter is hot, he'll look a lot more for the basket. To hit as many shots as he had this early, he'll be looking to score. Guyton off the pick, top of the key. Trying to break Kelly down, which he does, but the foul goes against the Mike Kelly in the paint. And that's going to be number one on Kelly. Bobby Knights posted his 200th college win at the age of 35. Unbelievable. Now over 700 wins. Wrecker with the run. Indiana's offense is really generating the early points, and that's the type of game Bob Knight wanted. 
Mitch. He's been here 28 years and 28 winning seasons. John Bryant with the basketball now. He has been on fire. Calderwood inside the first shot. Nice soft touch in first shot. Comes in averaging seven. He has six already tonight. The secrets of what Indiana tries to do on defense is they look at the top two leading scorers from the opponent, that's Mason and Collarwood, and try to shut them down. Make the third, fourth, and fifth leading scorers have big games. That means Vershaw's got to score. And Vershaw clears. Usually Vershaw more of a rebounder and assist man. Matter of fact, he was number three on assist last year. The Minnesota victory, he had five for the Badgers. 13 order to go. Tied at 16. Collarwood rejected. And it's knocked away by William Gladness. Badgers touch it last. It's coming back to Indiana. Wisconsin's moving the ball very well, and they're finding some weaknesses in the Indiana defense, getting the layups inside. That shot only prevented by the block, or Wisconsin had an easy two. So Lewis takes it down slowly. The Hoosiers will work out of the half court. Trying to snap this 16-16 deadlock. Look at inside to Gladness. Nice return pass, and Rob Turner in double figures with 10. Turner averaging five points a game, although he did get seven points and nine rebounds against Penn State. Dwayne Dwayne, he was an All-Stater right here in Bloomington. Maurice Linton. He thought Linton might be a key to this basketball team at the uh, top of the season. He's got that prototypical body at 6'7", 220. His playing time has been going up the last three games. That's Linton with the basketball. Vershaw inside to Kelly. Vershaw again looking inside, and Kelly's found quite a few openings there, and that easy basket. Boy, they really work that basketball, don't they, Jen? Great team defense, team offense. This is the spirit of college basketball, what Wisconsin shows you. Well, they definitely take the high percentage shot with 34 and 4 under Bennett, but shooting 45% or better. Wills are checking in. Charlie Wills, the freshman out of Indiana. And Fife, Dane Fife checking in for Turner, who gets a nice round of applause from the Hoosier fans. Ten points for Rob Turner. Luke Rector was in a some of a semi slump. Busted out with 20 points, 11 rebounds against Penn State. I heard in your pregame show where the coach said he actually played some pretty good defense. Probably overshadowed his offense as far as the coaches were concerned. At Indiana, if you play defense, you get in the game, and Rector showed that. But his, his forte is offense. He loves to take that three pointer. There he makes one. He stepped to the launching pad. That's the 48th time he shot a missile from the pad. Seven points now for record. 21-18, Indiana. John Bryant yet to shoot the rock. He's been on fire over the last 40 minutes. If you look at the average, he's averaging about 28 points if you broke it down that way. Knocked out by five. It stays with Wisconsin. We're going to take a pause. 11-18 to go in the first half. Indiana Hoosiers lead it over the Badgers, 21-18. Percent of their games in Assembly Hall, they lead it by three. Watch Lewis, 24. He's guarding Kelly. He switches off points to Wrecker to have him pick up Kelly, and then Wrecker leaves him. Kelly's all alone, so Wrecker missed uh, miscommunication on that switch. Here's Wrecker at the other end, and this is what he likes to do on the offense. Sets the pick, then he comes out. See, Dwayne runs into the player guarding Wrecker and leaves Wrecker wide open. Luke Recker. Boy, he's quite a player. Luke little Recker. Sh little shiner there. You see it at the Penn State game. He, he caught four stitches. The team doctor patched him up in time to get him in for the game tying shot at the buzzer. Boy, both regulation. John, both teams blistering the nets there. 68 and 67 percent. Recker looking for numbers. Goes high off the window. Doesn't get the bounce. And Dwayne Dwayne. I was wondering if Dwayne Dwayne would get a lot of playing time in this game. Of course, uh, playing his high school basketball right here in Bloomington. That's some great teams at Bloomington North. He's got a sister who plays on the team there now. And a big emotional. Basketball is an emotional game, Mike. And he's got 20 tickets he got from some of his buddies here. So his family's here. His parents are both professors here at Indiana. And Dwayne missed the shot. Little hang time. Dwayne Dwayne. All-Stater. 26 points, 10 rebounds in high school. Spin by A.J. Guyton. What a move by Guyton. Everything went smooth except the shot didn't roll in. As expected, this is a good one. 21-18, 10-24 to go in the first half. Calderwood, 17 points of the last two games. Hasn't had too many good looks at the bucket. Guyton playing some pretty good D. 
The freshman, Wills, a little shy that time. Rebound, Glasgow. Probably not the shot Dick Bennett was looking for. He likes to have Calderwood and, and Mason do the scoring. But they haven't had any shots recently. Hey, John, Indiana's doing a great job boxing out so far as Guyton stops and pops. With Guyton's again a streak, a streak score as well. He shoots well from the outside. But to get going, he likes to move off the drive, hit some shots, then, then they lay off a little bit, then he shoots the outside shot. I was going to say Indiana boxing out 52 rebounds at Penn State last Sunday. 17 more than the Lions, but uh, on the year, Hoosiers are getting beat on the boards. There's a reaching foul by Michael Lewis. That's number one on Lewis. Third team foul for Indiana. Lewis wanted the offensive foul there. Didn't get it. Wisconsin, three substitutions. Kowski, Kelly, and Bryant all done in. Indiana trying to match up now. So the Badgers going with the three guards. Bryant, Kelly, and Mason. Uh, Kowski and Gershaw taking care of business down in the paint. This is Kelly with a basketball. Mason. He's been held in check so far here tonight. Mason, a little fade. Another rebound by Grimes. Whistle down low. It goes against Mason, I believe. Definitely against Wisconsin. Boy, the matchups are key. Again, Wrecker, who's really a guard, he's playing forward. Now Mason matched up. Look at the concern on Dick Bennett's face. Wrecker's the tough guy for them to match up with. The, the, his Bennett's forwards are a little too big, and his guards are a little too small. Mason now with two fouls. And see how much time he plays here the rest of the half. Lewis and Fife in the backcourt with Guy, uh, Guyton. Fife, the freshman, only hitting three of his last 16 shots. Guyton with the spin, breaking his man down. Here's Lewis. Baseline, a little bit too strong. Boy, that's what Wisconsin wants. Kelly was able to stop Guyton one-on-one, -on -one, forced him to give the ball up. Lewis missed the shot. Hoosiers by five, 23-18. Looking down low, Vershaw working against Gladness. Vershaw. Taken away by Indiana now. Hoosiers with a chance to stretch the lead. Guyton dips inside. And rebound by Kelly this time. Boy, the Wisconsin guards, they can rebound. Probably He's the best rebounding guards in the Big Ten. He is a battler. I talked to Dick Bennett this morning and said, how did you compensate against Michigan State's rebounding? And, of course, the Badgers beat them early in the season. He said he had his big men hold their own and had the guards run in to get the boards. It's a great concept against those Spartans. Much stronger team on the front line. And getting back to that Michigan State game, too, uh, Dick Bennett's had a chance to call that game in Madison. Uh, did a great job of he played man to man. And then Mateen Please would be up on top for Michigan State with 10 seconds to go on the shot clock and dissolve into his zone. And Michigan State didn't handle it too well. The record comes out uh, for Indiana. And a Turner with 10 points checks back in for Bobby Knight. Life, Mr. Basketball in the state of Michigan. Screen. With Wrecker out of the game now, Indiana's going to look to Guyton to do the score, and A.J. realized that, came off a low pick. Now Indiana's lead up to seven. Boy, A.J. Guyton, he must, uh, if there is such a thing as the smoothest player in the Big Ten, he'd have to win that award. John Bryant, we're going to need his shooting on the perimeter tonight. Misfires that time. Bryant had that huge game in Iowa City when he drove down 22. And they throw it away. The Wisconsin defense. They come in averaging uh, well, about 7.6 steals uh, every ball game. And there's no doubt about it. As we said at the top of the broadcast, they get it done. Defense is the name of the game. Andy Kowski. Bryant outside. Forced that one, John. Put that one up probably a second too soon. 6.58 to go before they put the first book in the half. 
Indiana. And A.J. Gaten up 25 to 18. We're in Assembly Hall in Bloomington, Indiana. Mike Gleason uh, sitting alongside John Laskowski. And John, the Hoosiers using a 7-0 run to open up some breathing room. That's been in the last 5-12 of the game. Wisconsin's last basket came at 12-10. Usually so they're struggling on the offensive end. Usually that shoe is on the other foot, right? Usually Wisconsin shutting people down. Correct. There it is, 7-0. Jim Innes checks in for uh, Bobby Knights. Fife, the freshman out of Michigan with a basketball. Gladness had the shot and steady gives it down to Rob Turner who has 12 points now. Tough look for Gladness. You go up for that shot, you're wide open. You just want to take it, but then you see that white shirt. He dipped it right down for the easy layup. 27-18 now. Wisconsin can ill afford to misfire again on this possession. They haven't won here in 19 tries. Maurice Linton. High arcing shot gets the bounce, and Maurice Linton is in the scoring column. That's a tough shot there on the baseline, a turning jump shot, but exactly what Wisconsin needed to break that dry spell. And Linton draws the foul on Fife. Last time Dighton scored on the back cut down on the baseline. This time Fife was trying to do likewise. John Mason checking back in for Dick Bennett. Uh, John Bryant, who's been hotter than a pistol from outside. He misfired twice. He goes back to the bench. Boy, this is an interesting move by Bennett. He puts Mason in the game with two fouls. You hate to have your leading scorer pick up three in the first half, but he can see it's a seven-point Indiana lead. He needs the offense. He goes with Mason. Wisconsin Badgers with 10 road wins already in 1998-99. And they really, really need one here in Bloomington if they want to stay right on the heels of Tom Izzo Spartans of Michigan State. Mason. This time, a little shot of the time, and uh, the Hoosier fans wanted Andy Kowski called for the foul. Hoosiers by seven. Lewis, Fife cutting down, and he hits the runner. Great move to the basket by Fife. Indiana's aggressiveness on offense is outdueling Minnesota or Wisconsin's defense. Here's Fife going down the lane. Nice move inside. That's a tough shot. So Dane Fife, who averaged 26 points and five rebounds a game as a senior in high school, that has to do wonders for his confidence. He hasn't scored in the last two games. So his first bucket in three games completes the three-point play. 30 to 20 now, largest lead for the Hoosiers tonight. And that's the second foul on Kelly. And it looks like Dick Bennett's going to bring Dwayne back in to uh, replace Kelly. Whistle on this end. It goes against the Badgers again. And Dick Bennett, who was recently named a one of 15 finalists for the Naismith College Coach of the Year, sees his Badgers down by 10 with 5-10 to go. Maurice Linton actually snapping that drought recently with that baseline jumper. Well, Bennett works that sideline, too. He rarely sits down. He's pacing back and forth. What a great job he's done at Wisconsin. So Rob Turner, the 6'4", 200-pound senior with 12 points, looking for 13, which he has. Again, Turner's high, 25 against the Kentucky Wildcats. John mentioned nine rebounds and seven points in the double overtime victory against Penn State on Sunday. And make it 14 now for Mr. Turner and make it a 32 to 20 lead for the Hoosiers. Surprising 12 point lead for Indiana, but they've done it with 32 points, many more than uh, you might expect against a good defensive team like Wisconsin. Indiana doing a great job on the guards for Wisconsin. Mason working overtime for his shots. Caldwell hasn't gotten more than one shot so far. Bershog getting it down to the low post. One of Indiana's weaknesses this year has been rebounding. They've been out rebounding. Michigan State got it pretty good. Bring down the house. Sally up to Gladness, his first bucket, 34 22. So, what Indiana is doing against a good defensive team, they're bringing the ball down and scoring before Wisconsin gets their defense set. There's an example right there. Bershaw. Might as well take the shot. No one else is. Vershaw's fouled, and Vershaw's going to the line to shoot two. 
Well, Indiana continues to try to play the prevent defense on Mason and Calderwood. Don't let them handle the ball, which means Vershaw and Kowski and Duaney have to pick up the scoring. Something they're not used to doing. In high school, these guys all scored a lot of points. But in college, they have a different role. Let's watch Lewis. A nice lead. Duaney goes out. Gladys is coming in. Great time. Beautiful pass as Vershaw. First of two. Boy, Michael Lewis has been hot, too, in other ways. In the last five games, 39 assists, over 10 turnovers, only 10 turnovers. Vershaw now with nine points in the game. He comes in averaging seven. Badgers in second place. Would love to win a Big Ten championship. Mr. Vershaw getting married this summer. He's in double figures with Turner. The full court pressure by Wisconsin. Trying to figure out how to stop this scoring spree for Indiana. Jimmy Lips. Soft shot doesn't go. Gladden keeps it alive. Turner on the baseline. It's coming back the other way. A good hustle by Indiana. Just stepped on the line. Wills comes back in. Vershaw out with 10. And Bryant getting ready to check back in. And here he comes. So he's going to go for... Uh, Waiting. Mason's going to stay in. So John Bryant back in over the last four games, averaging 14 points. It all started in that victory over Illinois. He came off the bench and lit it up from the perimeter. Then he had 22 against Iowa. He's misfired his first two shots. But Dick Bennett needs someone to warm up on the outside. 34-24. Wills. Reject it. That's what I mean about an athletic move. Turner, six foot four, goes up against the six eight wheels and blocks that shot. Jimenez, top of the key. Light it up for another triple for Indiana. I'll tell you, there's something, Mike, about playing at home. The crowd gets in the game. The student section of Indiana has been staying the whole game, and that's not normally a shot that Luke Jimenez would take, but he had that feeling. He lets it go. He gets nice. Uh, recognition from the crowd, it's for John Moore. Hoosiers averaging six triples a game. They will surpass that tonight. Kowski with a sweeping hook shot. And that's the only way to cross quiet the home crowd is to make a shot the other end. Mason comes up with a steal. Pike gets it right back for Indiana. By two very solid backcourts uh, playing here in Bloomington tonight. Under three minutes to go. It's been a very, very swift first half. 248-37-26. Out of 10 seconds on the shot clock. Fight. Down to three. And Indiana takes a little bit too much time, but they get a break as Wisconsin commits the foul. Boy, that's what's tough on the coaches. You play good defense for 33 seconds and then a foul. Sends your opponent to the line. Well, I tell Lon Kruger that this year with all the freshmen he has, huh? You play about 32, 33 seconds, then you watch the other team score. Jim O'Brien had that problem last year at Ohio State. Wisconsin's had a great record this year against top 25 teams. They're 5 0. Oh. Indiana, on the other hand, only 3 and 6. So Michael Lewis, the junior out of Jasper, Indiana, at the line. He's at 16 of his last 18 from the stripe over the last five games. Overall, 76% shooter, 83% in Big Ten play. And he misfires, so I put the, the jinx on him, I guess. <laughs> Two and a half minutes to go in the first half. And Calderwood. Still yet to score for the Badgers. So Jim has put pressure right at the 10-second line when he comes across. So a situation uh, like this, Jim does not have as many help side responsibilities. His job is to stay with Calder. And John Bryant finally connects. It's a 2, 37 to 28. Bryant's first uh, deuce of the evening. Two minutes to go in the first half. Jim is. Lewis with the runner, tries to go off the window. He's called for a little traveling music. That's the third turnover on Indiana. 
A buck 51 to go in the first 20 minutes from Bloomington. 37 to 28. The Indiana Hoosiers. 28. The Wisconsin Badgers with a seven-game winning streak on the line. Let's check out some other scores, uh, John, around the country. First of all, on the Big East. St. John's over Miami. St. John's having a great season. In the SEC. Auburn continues their winning ways. Up big on South Carolina at the half. Here's a Big Ten score. Minnesota and Illinois. Illinois is getting better. Keeping that game close. Speaking of those Gophers, they outshot and out-rebounded Wisconsin in that 61-50 loss. The Wisconsin got to the line 15 times more than uh, Minnesota. And right now, the Badgers having a hard time finding the range here in Bloomington, where they've lost 19 straight. Bryant from three. In and out, no good. Guyton clears for the Hoosiers. So John Bryant, who's shooting 42% from three-point territory this year, having a hard time finding the range. Fife breaks his man down and gained Fife with five points. Tough shot there as he's falling away from the basket. He's done a nice job defensively in his freshman year, but he can score as well. That's a good move. And speaking of scoring, Collywood having a tough time getting any shots. A.J. Guyton playing some real tough D. Duaney, Duaney, little fade. Misfires and Fife is in there battling Kowski and Kowski's called for over the back. Duaney really trying to get something going here for himself. He's trying to get that first shot to go and get that, uh, that good feeling going, especially here in front of the, his home crowd, a lot of his high school friends here. But this isn't the regular Wisconsin offense. They're usually led by Calderwood and Mason. They're struggling. And so Dick Bennett trying to find some points. And Fife at the line. He's got five points. We mentioned the fact that he hadn't scored in the last two games. Hitting three of his 16 shots. Definitely not shy tonight. Misfires. In all fairness to Fife, though, only six turnovers in league play, even though he has been shooting the ball well. Here's the block out. Look at that. Four Indiana players, three Wisconsin players, and Kowski goes over the back. And Fife misfires on both occasions. Linton clears under a minute now. 49 seconds to go in the first 20 minutes. 39-28. Hoosiers on top. Indiana with 17 victories. Bobby Knight looking for his 20th straight 21 season. And the foul on top on Dane Fife, the freshman. That's one on him. That's only five team fouls on Indiana. We talked about one of the keys to the game was Wisconsin getting some scoring from the free throw line. They're great shooters there. They just haven't been able to get there. Only five team fouls now for Indiana. 20 seconds time out for the seconds. Well, this 20 second timeout is brought to you by Spies. There you see the Big Ten rankings in field goal percentage. Ohio State leads it. Indiana second and Wisconsin not bad there at fourth, but there's uh, not going to be there at least in the first half here in tonight's game. Well, how about that Indiana or Ohio State team, huh? 47 percent. You just look at them six and three in the Big Ten, John. I mean, last year they had players on that basketball team that, uh, I mean, obviously walk-ons in Jim O'Brien's initial campaign in Columbus that might have had a hard time logging a playing time of the Mid-American Conference, and they were getting a lot of minutes in Columbus. Now, Scooney Penn and Michael Red, they've turned that thing around. It's amazing how fast these things can change. Wisconsin this year, Ohio State. Of course, Illinois, co-big champs last year, and they're having a tough year. Indiana ripping the cords at 57%. So Wisconsin, really, 44, they're right on their season's average, but it's been the more than 50% shooting by Indiana that's made the difference in the game. Well, so Wisconsin, really, I don't have the uh, shot count, but really working hard to get a good look at the basket. Duaney, Duaney, deep in the baseline, misfires from three-point territory, and Gladness almost came up with a basketball, but John Bryant knocks it out of bounds. Indiana get one last shot, eight seconds. So they bring their offense in. That's Wrecker. Wrecker's. I'm sorry, John. 11 points. Uh, really a pretty big lead. Uh, Wisconsin's played all their games except one in eight or less points. Uh, their margin of victory. The good news for Wisconsin is they're 5-0 when they trailed the half. Fife, three-point territory. Misfires and 2.9 on the clock. Whistle and a foul on Luke Wrecker. 
Well, it's uh, it's not the kind of foul you want. The good news is, though, that Indiana's not over the limit yet, so Wisconsin will still have to take it out with 2.9 instead of getting a one and one. Well, Fife had a good look at the bucket from three-point land. And this now would, Wisconsin with 2.9 left. This would be a big lift if they uh, Wisconsin could somehow score, get that to 30, only down nine. That'd be huge. Well, they'll even take a three if they can get it, huh? There's a three. <laughs> Well, they had 2.9 on the clock, uh, but Charlie Wills, the freshman, uh, opted to take one from half court. And Dick Bennett trails 39-28 at the half. In jeopardy, their seven-game winning streak. John and I are back after this. Sometimes you just can't get over the hump, and Wisconsin definitely not playing their, their brand of basketball uh, it's, tonight. It's the same old story, playing on the road in the Big Ten. That's where you win or lose the league championship. Wisconsin's had a great run. A lot of their second-half of the season games are on the road and this is a tough place to play at indiana not the regular wisconsin team though all right john now let's take a look at our auto zone first half highlights uh, auto zone the best parts in auto parts for indiana to win the game they've got to do it on the offensive end and here's wrecker he's going to end up with a three-point he tried to post up couldn't get that done so now he takes brian outside watch dewaney actually sets a screen on bryant and that leaves wrecker open and top of the key, he can hit that shot. Now Gladness will look for the ball inside. This is when he was ready to take the shot. Passes it up on the nice pass to Turner. And Indiana gets the layup. For Wisconsin, Mason Calder would have been pretty well shut out by the Hoosier defense. So they've relied on other people to score. Here's Vershaw, who can score. He takes that one up easily. Well, they say Vershaw's probably the only top 50 player they have on the Badger roster. They get it done with teamwork and defense. But right now, as you can see, the Indiana Hoosiers, they're magic. They're over the Badgers, 39-28. Indiana, 39-28. We'll be back with more of our halftime Hoosiers, 39-28 over the Wisconsin Badgers. Now let's take a look at our halftime stats brought to you by Citizens Insurance. What's the states without citizens? That field goal percentage, very interesting, Mike. Wisconsin about right on, 43%. Indiana, 55%. Wisconsin only gives up 40%. So that's the difference in the ball game. Indiana is hitting their shots. And you can see the points off turnovers. Indiana has nine. Wisconsin, nothing on, uh, on that. Rebounds are pretty even. And not many turnovers. Look at only five and three. A very good job by Indiana. And you look at the three-point play. And Mason is two for two from three-point territory, John, but uh, they've, they've struggled from the outside. So as you said, they've gone inside to Bershaw, who has 10. Well, look at Mason, only six points. He's their leader, and you don't see Calderwood on there at all. So Bershaw's had to come through with 10 for Indiana. Recker and Guyton, their key seven and six, a little below average, but they've still got the second half to go. And we mentioned Mason was uh, two for two from three-point territory. Calderwood only 1999, but it's not going to come easy. And uh, John, you look at the first half early on anyway. They got a couple of quick uh, good looks down low. They did, and the fast pace of the game favored Indiana. Here's the pass from Linton. He found Kelly on an Indiana mistake defensively. Kelly gets the easy hoop, and that brought a look of concern from Bob Knight. For Indiana, they've been moving the ball well. Guyton on a drive this time. Goes all the way in for the reverse layup. If it's an offensive game, Mike, Indiana's going to win it. If it's a defensive second half, then Wisconsin has a chance to come back. And check out other scores in the Big East. Uh, Miami now. The last time we checked that, John, St. John's was on top. And that's in New York, Madison Square Garden. That would be an upset. In Auburn. Uh, Cliff Ellis, we talked about Dick Bennett, the coach of the year. Cliff Ellis and Auburn, they may have the turnaround team in the country. Minnesota now surging in the lead at the half, but they'll usually hold that home court when they're up in Minnesota. And Mark Vershaw, the numbers on him, he came in averaging seven, ten points in the first half, four of six shooting the ball. He relied, uh, was relied on heavily by Dick Bennett for offense, not starting the second half. And Mason's out there. He's got two fouls. Kelly's out there with two fouls. So foul trouble for Wisconsin could be a factor here in the second half. And these Wisconsin Badgers against top 25 competition are shooting 44% from the three-point territory. 28 in the first half against these Hoosiers. Turner kicks it back out to Gladness. Good ball movement. Goes out of bounds, though. It stays with Indiana. Last touch by Mike Kelly. Better defense there by Wisconsin. That's how they're going to get back in the ball game. 39 points is a lot against the Wisconsin team in the first half. 
A.J. Guyton averaged 30 points a game last week. Go Big Ten Player of the Week along with Quincy Lewis of Minnesota. Here's Turner. He's had the hot hand for Indiana so far. Right. Oh, stutter step. Drives, misses the shot, but boy, what a great move. And Indiana was forced to get down to five seconds before able to get that shot, so a good opening uh, defensive stance by Wisconsin. Mason, two for two from three-point territory. Now make it two for three, but you could tell he wanted the rock and he wanted to put it up quickly. He knows he's got to get this team going offensively. He won't shy away from that shot. Uncontested as Rob Turner takes a little trip down the lane. 16 points now for Mr. Turner. One of the things Indiana's always been able to do is move without the ball. And uh, Wisconsin has let them do that. Kept some guys on guard for easy shots. Well, Sean Mason takes it inside this time. His first bucket of the second half. That gives him eight, and it's back to 11 at 41-30. But it's amazing, Mike. Even one basket can get a guy going, especially a guy like Mason. Rook Wrecker, three for four in the first half. His first bucket, he has nine. Took a shot. Wills on that pick. Ball tipped by Wrecker, so Wisconsin will keep it. Look at the look on Michael Lewis's face. And Hightower is looking down at Bobby Knight, says uh, Wrecker did touch it. Watch Lewis. He gets racked right here. That's a good screen, and that's Wrecker's fault. He didn't call that screen out. Lewis goes down, but that's a good, solid play by Wisconsin. So the Badgers have another chance. Linton on top of the key, down 43-30. Mason taking over offensively now. Back-to-back -back buckets uh, for Sean Mason. I'm sure Dick Bennett brought that up at the half. Got Mason aside and said, you're our leader. you got to do something for us. And Mason now twice in a row has gotten the Badger basket. And that puts him in double figures along with Bershaw with 10 points. Record. Stolen away by Calderwood. Yes, it is. It looked like he touched the ball last. I'm not sure how they're going to call Took that the one. the 22nd timeout. He had the possession before he stepped out of bounds. Looked right at the rep, called the 22nd. Very smart play. Well, this 22nd timeout is brought to you by Finish Line. Here's the Big Ten rankings in three-point field goals. Northwestern, I know it's been a while since they've led the conference at 40%. Wisconsin at number four. They're struggling a little today. And Indiana sixth at 32%. That has to be frustrating when you're shooting 44% against top 25 competition. You can't make it go down. Now watch Calderwood here. The ball's going out of bounds. He leaves possession. There's the timeout right to the referee, and that's a perfectly legal play. Look at that. The ref looks at the feet, then he sees the timeout. Points Wisconsin's way. You, how in the world could be Wisconsin ball unless you saw the timeout yeah. signal? I Great play it. by Calderwood. I certainly missed it. You know, that's uh, definitely a headsy play. A lot of coaches don't like that. No, and, and, and there may be some discussion to change that rule, but these players have picked on, up on it, and they use it wisely. And Wisconsin now two for eight. Indiana yet to take a three-pointer in the second half. Four for seven as they were at halftime. Mason. Mason will be the guy to watch for Wisconsin. He's made two in a row. Calderwood still trying to get on track. Well, Indiana doing a great job. Only one shot for Calderwood in the first half. There's his first of the second, and he gets the bounce, and it's a three. I think he heard you when you <laughs> mentioned only one shot in the half. And he got a lucky roll there. But now you've got an eight-point game. Wisconsin right back in it. Wrecker. Gladness keeping it alive. He had four double-doubles, second in the Big Ten. That's his first bucket in the second half. What a move by Gladness. He took that long stride, able to get back in the field of play, and laid it in. Ten-point lead for Indiana. Mason off the pick. Thought about it. Last time Mason has not scored in double figures. Kowski, a whistle. The shot does not count. Travel music for Andy Kowski. I was going to say the last time Mason has not scored for Dick Bennett in double figures back on January 20th against Illinois. Bennett trying to figure out the offense. His defense is coming back to life here in the second half. Now he needs to score some points. Well, this Indiana team, though, it's so unselfish. You look at guys like uh, well, Lewis, for instance, averaged 31 in high school. There's Lewis with a basketball. With guys like Wrecker, who takes the shot and hits the shot. He's in double figures for 11. Wisconsin took the chance for the steal, and when you do that, it's risk and reward. You miss the steal, and it gives Wrecker a 10-footer. 
Back to a dozen at 47 to 35. There's Mason. Good shot fake there. He's on it. He's on it right now. Three in a row. And Mason now. With 12 on the night, 47 to 37. Scott's trying to step it up defensively and lead the Big Ten defensively, as did the football team. The last time the football and basketball team uh, led the Big Ten back in 1966-67 when Michigan State did it. Knocked out of bounds, it stays on the end. And then again. 15.35 to go. The Wisconsin Badgers trying hard. John Mason's hot, but they still trail by 10. Ball and the Hoosier State now with 11 points uh, coming off the double double against Penn State. Indiana's basketball, they lead by 10. A little zone now by Wisconsin, 2 3. First time they've used that tonight. Indiana goes right with a three point shot, probably not the one Bob Knight wanted. No, but if it goes, boy, that's a zone buster, huh? Well, you're right, he was, he was uh, maybe even out of, outside of his range for a little record. On that one. Oh, beautiful feet inside of Turner. Turner faked to go out and set the pick and then just wheel right back to the basket. 18 now for Turner. 49-37, back to 12. Mason taking over the second half for the Badgers. Missed the shot and a Turner rebounds. And here comes Indiana with a running shoes on. Hoosiers over the last eight seasons averaging 79 points a game. And Turner loses it out of bounds. See, again, Wisconsin set their zone up, but Turner cut right under the basket and was open. He couldn't handle the ball. Kicked out of bounds. So Bobby Knights, during that uh, span over the last eight years, number one scoring team in the Big Ten. This year averaging 75 points a game. As John pointed out, against the top defensive team in the Big Ten so far this year. And Calderwood still... Having a tough time making the rock drop. Goaltending, no call. What a block by Wills. Guyton thought he had that one. You can't touch the ball after it hits the backboard. Wills, uh, let's take a look now. Here's Guyton going up. Wills times it. Ball's up. Had not hit the backboard yet. In fact, Wills hits it into the backboard. So that looked like a good call. Bob Knight wanted the goaltending. So a reprieve for the Badgers. Down 12. Mason. Six in the first half, six in the second so far. 14-16 left, Mike. Wisconsin needs a spark right now. So it's, it's a game where they don't score a lot of points. They need to start to turn that momentum now. Indiana still got their way now. Lead it by 12. Mike Kelly. Little feed to Wills. The freshman tries to kiss it off the window, but he gets to the offensive stick back. You now Wisconsin going to try some different types of defense. They're back to the man-to-man -man now. I think Dick Bennett wants them to pick up a little farther outside. And there's the steal. Kelly with a good reach. And Wisconsin with a chance to cut the deficit to single digits again. Mason, he says, why not for three? And a heads-up play by Lewis. Throws it off the leg of Sean Mason. Well, that's what I was talking about. Wills hits the layup. Wisconsin steals. They get the ball to Mason for a three. That would have been five unanswered points. They Mason misses the shot. Lewis scrambles for the rebound, bounces off of Mason. That was a big turning point right there. That would have cut the lead to seven. Now Indiana a chance to build back up on it. But it just takes a play or two just like that to change the momentum and go. Right now, Indiana in control. Oh, Wisconsin's working overtime trying to grab Big Mo on their side, but they just can't get over that hurdle. That's going to be number three on Sean Mason, and they can ill afford to get this young man into uh, foul trouble. Wisconsin brings Brian in. He's the offensive guy. They have to take Mason out, though. 13-23 left. Mason holding his right shoulder. Indiana by 10. There's a whistle down on the paint, and the foul goes against uh, Wisconsin. I believe it's against Maurice Linton. He's got the job on record now, and record very active inside. Linton trying to stay with him, uh, got called for the hole. There's Mason on the Wisconsin bench. See him working that shoulder. He may have got bumped. 
Brand new shot clock at 32. You know, with UConn going down to, to Syracuse at 1976-team of Indiana, still the last unbeaten team as Rob Turner has 20 points. Turner having one of those games where he's in a zone. This is where the home crowd can spark you. They want a defensive stand here. Leads now up to 12. Oh, tough pass there as Bryant found Kelly. Kelly lights it up from on top of the key. That is a three. And Mike Kelly's first bucket in the second half, 7, 51, 42, back to nine. I'm not sure that, uh, that Bryant saw Kelly there. He's spinning a 360 and looking for that red shirt. Kelly right there at the top of the key. That's a good point. I think Dick Bennett was actually holding his breath on that one. <laughs> he got down inside the land of the Giants with nowhere to go. Will's coming back in. Bershaw takes a rest. Uh, Linton coming out. Dick Bennett trying to keep his guys fresh. Replaces two big guys for two other big guys. Mason's out. Wisconsin needs to find some offense. Rucker trying to break down the freshman Wills and a reaching foul. I believe it goes against Calderwood as he uh, breaks in for the attempted steal. Dick Bennett needs the steal, so his guys have to take some chances. 12.30 left, and all that seems like a long time against a slow-paced team like Wisconsin. We may see Indiana start to slow their offense down a little bit here to run some clock. Well, the Wisconsin bench are getting it done. They're coming in averaging 20 points a game compared to the opposition 14. They were 14-4 against Minnesota, and the bench up on Indiana tonight. Record with the drive, a little shy, and Wills clears. So, like you said, plenty of time to go, John, and uh, the Badgers now with a chance to cut this down to maybe seven, could be six with a triple. Ed Hightower, not a popular call in front of the Indiana band and students, but the ball to Wisconsin. Feeds inside, kisses it off the window. Calderwood continues to struggle. Boy, that was his best shot of the night. Wide open layup. And sometimes just to have those kind of nights. And keep in mind, he's been red hot to probably the hottest of the Badgers. Bryant deep in the corner. Probably rushed it, but Wills tries to keep it alive and can't find control of the basketball. Goes out of bounds. We're going to take a timeout from Bloomington. 11.45 to go in the ball game. Dick Bennett's Badgers trailing at 51 to 42. 51 to 42. Wisconsin just can't get over the hump and grab that momentum. Checking the Big East, John. St. John's almost beats Duke. And they get beat by UConn, and they go down again as Tim James. Boy, you talk about Richard Hamilton at UConn. Tim, Tim James, what an outstanding player for Miami. St. John's with the defeat at home. I got ahead of myself last time I said uh, Wisconsin is... Their bench is beating the opposition so far in 1999, which is true. But right now, Indiana with the lead as far as the substitutions coming off the bench, outscoring Wisconsin 11-6. Five team fouls now in Wisconsin. Only one for Indiana, so Wisconsin has not been able to get to the line against the Hoosiers. One of our keys to the game, and Indiana will be there shortly. Well, that's the second time now. Record's been matched up with the freshman. It looks like he's trying to break him down, but Wills has done a pretty good job of keeping Luke away from the bucket. Gladness loses control, and Gladness picks it up. A.J. Guyton. Three. Turner. Stick back in by Guyton. No basket. Turner fouled on the shot, so the tip by Guyton won't count. But once again, a lot of white jerseys, John, around the hoop. Boy, Indiana concentrating on the rebounding. Not a good rebounding team. They're last in the conference in rebounding. But look at Turner going after that ball. And there you see Guyton touched it. Hey, the assembly hall can be so loud at one end and then quiet <laughs> as can be as Turner <laughs> tries that free throw. Well, here's a man who scored over 1,900 points in high school. He has 21, his high 25 against Kentucky. He is now three away from matching it, 22. He's been the surprise of the game. Some 
Bob Knight put him in the starting lineup, a rare start for Turner, but uh, he must have known something. He's hot tonight. And Journey only averaging about 13 and a half minutes a game, but uh, it's good to see that he's getting a lot of playing time because some coaches, once you get into a routine, no matter how hot a player is, they still keep pulling them off the floor. I never did understand that. I mean, they're only 20 years old. How can a 20-year-old be tired running up and down? Huh? <laughs> that's right. <laughs> and that's three on record, so that's a big foul for him. 10.47 left. See if Bob Knight makes that substitution. Mason now back in with three. Two team fouls for Indiana. Boy, Dick Bennett could really benefit by Indiana going into or Wisconsin going into the bonus. Brian outside. Boy, he's been off. He's been red hot, too. A little shy on that three. 53 to 42. Indiana by 11. There's the steal. Boy, Wisconsin's coming up with more steals in the second half and, and some near steals they should have had. And that's one thing that could turn this game. Only 10 minutes left now, 10-20. Still down 11. And Wisconsin at 19 and 3. Brian thought about it for three-point territory. You look at their schedule this year, really benefits as Kowski takes the 14-footer, knocks it down. Pretty smooth on that shot. Wisconsin's just not getting the shots they would normally get in the game. Indiana's putting good pressure on them. But looking at uh, Wisconsin's 19 and 3 record, you look at their schedule. They only play Iowa, Minnesota, Indiana, and Purdue just once this season, which definitely benefits the Badgers. Inside, Wrecker against Wills. Wills doing a good job on Luke Wrecker. Well, the rematch against Michigan State in East Lansing, the key for Wisconsin and the Big Ten race. Two on two action, Mason. They, he is terrific. And that's why Bennett's got him in there. You can see the crowd now. They, it's down to seven because Indiana has not been able to keep that double-digit lead. Mason, nice job of sliding it out the window from the left side with the right hand. I thought it was going to be blocked. Turner, little hang time. Gladness. Good pressure by Wisconsin. Forced Turner to dish that ball off. Good heads he play by Turner, though, because he had uh, entered the land of no return. Turner now the job on Mason. And Wisconsin looks to screen for him well. Mason for three, a little bit too strong. Guyton clears for Indiana. Mason had the hot hand. That was an air ball. Gladness takes it hard to the rack, and the offensive foul goes against William Gladness. That's the old screen and roll. Gladness picks for Guyton. The switch is made, so Guyton dumps off. But Gladness called for the foul. Here's the look. There's the pick. Guyton goes right. There's the switch. Now Gladness comes in and the foul. So once again, William Gladness and the Indiana Hoosiers, their lead under 10 at 55 to 46. 36 substitutions by Wisconsin, only eight for Indiana, meaning that Wisconsin will be a little fresher, but still looking for that lineup that can score some points. Mason off the dribble. Rebound. Gladness as Jimenez keeps it alive. Ball was tapped by Calderwood. Reason not for the double dribble there on Guyton. And Lewis nearly took the step. Now Mason. Uh oh. This could be four. It is. He got called for the right arm. All right. Watch Mason right there, middle of the screen, lower. Guyton comes in to set the pick. Mason, all for the foul. Now, what's going to be interesting with Sean Mason with four, obviously coming on for Duaney Duaney right now. But once he gets back into the ball game, how carefully will he play on defense? Hanks, he's up to 14 points, nearing his 18-point average. Now Duaney in. I think Dick Bennett's still looking for Duaney being back here in his hometown to get something going. A.J. Guyton, that's his first point of the second half, giving him seven. Keep in mind that he's averaged 30 over the last week, 33 of, against Penn State in the double overtime win. A great uh, anticipation, Mike, for the Big Ten tournament this week in Chicago, first weekend in March. If it started today, Indiana would play Penn State, the uh, team they beat Sunday, and the winner would play Wisconsin. So we could have another matchup between these two teams shortly. 
And of course, Penn State losing the Mateen Cleaves of Michigan State by two last night. Uh, in four games at home, they've lost four games by 11 points. Calderwood finally strokes it from three-point territory. And you say, finally, it only takes one shot, though. Now he says, finally, I made that shot. Now I'm ready to go. So with Mason out, it's up to Calderwood to get the Badgers back in it. Six now for Calderwood, all in the second half. 57 to 49. Vlad trying to use some muscle. He's got it. Hershaw went down. Gladness had the jump hook. So Gladness, the MVP of the Hoosier Classic this year, pushes the lead back to 10 for Indiana. And now time is becoming of the essence. Good defense by Gladness. Hoosiers. Lewis off the window. He scores. Big series there. Indiana with four straight points. Wisconsin needs a timeout. And they're going to take a 20 second timeout or a full. It looks like they were indicating the 20. And the Hoosier fans out of their seats here in Bloomington. Let's watch the last play. Gladness comes around Vershaw on the low side. Lewis takes the steal. He's left handed, so that's the side he likes to come in on. Let's the defense goes by and lays it in. First bucket for Lewis. But again, he's been getting it done in so many different intangibles in the game of basketball. 39 assists over the last three games for Lewis. There's the number, 7.05 to go from Bloomington. Wisconsin Badgers really, really need this victory if they're going to stay on the heels of Michigan State. I'm sure Tom Izzo and his staff uh, found a satellite dish, and they're watching this ball game. They could open up some breathing room after their two-point victory. They're 8-1, Wisconsin 7-2 in the Big Ten. Calderwood. He's stuck in the three in the last possession for Wisconsin. But again, the Badgers having a hard time just uh, getting control of the basketball on top. First shot. Trying to back his man in. Ten on the shot clock. Calderwood. He'll take it. It's rejected. Guyton, right. Great defensive play by Guyton. Calderwood felt that one. During the seven-game winning streak, the Badgers holding the opposition at 25% for three-point territory. But now Indiana, they don't have to stroke the three at this juncture. Record coming off the pick with feed rejected by Vershaw that time. It goes out of bounds and it stays with Indiana. So we're going to take a pause here from Bloomington. 6-12 to go in the ball game. The Hoosiers in control by an even dozen, 61 to 49. 12 seconds before they lay this one to rest and close the books on it as Indiana 17 and 7 with 4 and 5 in the Big Ten. But the spotlight has been shining on the Wisconsin Badgers. They come in at 19 and 3, 7 and 2. Bobby Knight with 11 Big Ten titles. And Dick Bennett's looking for Wisconsin's third 21 season in the history of the school. The time of the essence. Off the inbound, off the window, doesn't fall, and Calderwood clears for Wisconsin. Badgers getting beat in the second half of the boards, 11 to 5, now make it 11 to 6. Indiana switching on Mason. That's why it's been harder for him to get open. And that forces the outside shot by Linton. His first bucket of the second half. Definitely got the bounce on that one. At this juncture, though, got to credit the young man for stepping up and taking the shot. They need somebody to warm up. Guyton outside. Bring it up. That's another three for A.J. Guyton. Big shot right there for Indiana. Guyton has just passed Luke Recker as Indiana's leading scorer with that big game against Penn State. Just over 16 a game. So A.J. Guyton, 13-point lead, the largest again. A.J. Guyton and Luke Recker, speaking of those two, they're 9-0 when they combine for at least 40 points. Right now, Recker with 11, Guyton with 11. But upon saying that, they're also 9-0 when they spread the wealth, and there's four double figures for Indiana. Indiana. 
four in their last six games are at home. The road games are to Northwestern and to Illinois. So Indiana's looking at, we've had a tough start to this season. We're four and five now. But if we run the table, we're going to be back in the top uh, division of the Big Ten. Mason playing with four. Kowski will rarely take that shot. Kicks it back out to Kelly. Inside, outside game. And Kowski hits his second hook shot. Evening that gets him eight points. Four in the second half. Good confidence by the young man. He dishes it back out. They go right back into him for the jump hook. Wisconsin's going to need some three-point shots now. Or they're going to need to score quick. Indiana helped him there with uh, the ball going off the gate. So the Badgers with a chance to cut it to single digits again. There you see the numbers with time. Under four and a half minutes to go now here from Bloomington. Mason, three-point territory. Step to the launching pad. He hits it, and Mason now with 17 points. One under his average, 64 to 56. Wrecker from three. But they had 31 threes on Sunday against Penn State. Misfires, and here come the Badgers again. And Mason's got it. Trying to take Jimenez. Likes to take that dribble in and back right out. Take the quick shot. Jimenez came out with him. Still trying to convince Big Mo to come over to their side. Sean Mason now. 19 and momentum may finally be shifting 64 to 58. Five straight points by Mason. The Wisconsin bench is up. Inside the whistle before the shot. And it goes against Andy Kowski. And the Hoosiers... Shooting foul, but uh, keep in mind they are in the bonus as well. Now watch Mason moving out the ball. That's the key to being a scorer in this league. It's a good screen. Jimenez goes down. Mason comes off that pick, ready to shoot. AJ Guyton misfires from the line. A 79% shooter. Here come the Badgers down. 334 to go. Trying to get open. Jimin is really handling there on the right side of the screen. Now he's got it. Mason thought about backing up into the three-point territory. Calderwood streaking down the lane, kisses it off the window. Tough shot there. Two defenders right in it. Calderwood starting to get his offense going. Eight in the second half down. Ty Calderwood. Four-point lead. It was 13 just moments ago. Bobby Knight off the bench now for Indiana. Big possession here, under three minutes. And at Wisconsin, they've held the leading score 12 times under his average as Wrecker steps outside, little shy on the three. Good box out that time by Mason, and Jimenez goes over the back. I was going to say, uh, John, that Wisconsin's held 12 of their opponents' leading scores under their average, and we will extend that thought when we come back from this break. 2.41 to go. It is a tight one. Four point lead. Making their run, John. And they did it with the outside shooting. Mason, the guy, their go to guy, finally gets a three pointer to drop. And Calderwood on the inside. Indiana comes to help out. Tough shot there as he banks that one in. Close as Wisconsin's been in a while. And they have the ball. So Mason's up to 50%. Uh, you see the numbers on him for the night. 14 of his 20 have come in the second half. Kelly with a basketball. Badgers down by four. Wisconsin looks for Calderwood or Mason. Bershaw had the big first half. Quiet in the second half. It goes out of bounds off the hand of Sean Mason. And Bershaw forces the pass down on the baseline. Lewis stayed right with Mason. Caused him to not be able to catch that ball. So it's Indiana's defensive stand there. Causes the turnover. 17 of the 22 opponents for Wisconsin scored less than 60, but Hoosier snapped that with 64, but Kowski says get this stuff out of here. So Andy Kowski, the leading shot blocker with an 18, make it 19 now for the Badgers. Watch the block here. Wrecker thinks he's got the layup all the way. 
A.J. Guyton, the first Hoosier to score 400 or more points in the first two years since Calvert Chaney. He has 11, 33 on Sunday. Lewis with only one bucket, trying to break his man down. Michael Lewis takes the shot. He's going to the line, shooting two. Oh, a rare one-on-one -on -one move by Lewis. And it was to his right, and he's a left-handed player, but Calderwood picks up his fourth foul. So both Mason and Calderwood with four. And Lewis at the line. Not a bad guy to have at the stripe either, John. 83% shooter in Big Ten play. Lewis with 10 assists tonight. A rare miss for Lewis. I tell you, though, uh, Mike, under two minutes. Sometimes those free throw percentages uh, go way down. So Lewis with 49 assists in the last six games now with three points, 65-60, it's back to five. Under two minutes to go here from Bloomington, Indiana. Mason deep in the corner. Misfires from three. Boy, that's the shot that Mason wanted. Just a two-possession game. And Mason's gone. Big play there by Lewis as he draws Mason into the fifth foul. Heads up play by Michael Lewis. There's nothing Mason could do. You miss that shot as a shooter. You miss that shot. I think I got to make up for it. Now go for the steal. Miss the steal. Now look at Lewis. Slows up. Right there's the contact. And Mason is now gone. Heads up play by Michael Lewis. Wow. So Sean Mason, the sharpshooter, out with 20, 14. Actually, 19 points, two rebounds. Bryant comes in for him, who is not a bad shooter, but not the, the offensive scorer that Mason would be. So the southpaw goes to the line, unlike last time. Ice water in his veins, he hits the first. For the bonus situation, gives him four. And the Indiana lead is back up to six with a minute 38 to go. Make it seven. So now, who do they turn to? Bryant's on the floor. He's been cold. They've checked Calderwood pretty well on the perimeter. Well, Wisconsin needs some quick baskets, quick change of possession here. Bershaw with a strong move, but the ball wouldn't drop. And Bershaw's charged with the foul. And Indiana's going back 94 feet with another one-on-one situation with a buck 20 on the clock. Here's inside. Vershaw's got the move. And the ball rolls right off the rim. Indiana there and Haston. Vershaw's got to commit the foul. Send Haston to the line. And now 10 team fouls. So Indiana has two free throws the rest of the way in. Huge swing right there, John. Instead of a 67 to 62 game, Haston will have a chance to make it a 68 to 60 game if he hits this free throw. Kirk Haston with only two points, averaging 15 eight rebounds over the last three games. It's one of two. And Dick Bennett, he and Stu Jackson, the only Badger coaches to take the Badgers to the postseason back to back games. Three point shot doesn't fall. Another rebound by Indiana. Say, Michael Lewis has played great in the last few minutes for Indiana. Comes up with that rebound, and he goes back to the line. That's what you really have to hand it to some of these college players. Here's a guy who led the entire state of Indiana in scoring at 31 points a game in high school. And you get here, obviously, playing for one of the best coaches in the country, but his role changes so much. Well, to become a Big Ten player, you've got to be a big scorer. Especially at Indiana, your role changes, and each year it can change. From one year to the next, you've got to fit, find out, how do I fit? into the lineup and the uh, I think the great thing that Bob Knight does is he looks at this team and says this has got to be your role communicates that to the player and by the end of the year the team starts to gel Indiana tough first part of the Big Ten season now they seem to be coming up a little better Lewis one of two again six points all in the second half nine point lead for Indiana Dick Bennett needs some instant offense Calderwood had nowhere to go he threw it out of bounds but Indiana touched it last So the Indiana Hoosiers losing in overtime to Minnesota, beating Penn State in double overtime. They have Purdue coming in here Tuesday. One minute, one minute. Now 
Wisconsin needs the three. Calderwood looking for it. And now they'll need to foul. Okay, Indiana never trailed the whole game. They were tested at the two-minute mark, and they answered the call. 42 seconds to go before they put this one to rest. Calderwood's shot abandoned him tonight. Lewis, uh, no hurry to put up the rock right now. Down to 30 seconds. Lewis streaks down the lane. And Michael Lewis now with eight second half points. 71 60 back to 11. Calderwood might as well stroke it. Kelly inside. Bershaw. They need the three. He'll take the two. And he missed by. And he picks up another fall. And we're going back to the line. A big win for Indiana. Back home. Wisconsin, second place in the conference. Roll along pretty good. Seven straight victories. I tell you, it sends quite a message to Michigan State. Gives them a two-game lead on the rest of the field. A lot of smiles. There's the guy with the hot hand for most of the game. 22 points for Turner. We haven't even seen a whole lot of uh, Mr. Turner for the last five or six minutes. Wow, he's the one that set the uh, momentum, though, for Indiana. Gladness with five double-doubles. Make it six now. 14 points, 11 rebounds. Number one in double-doubles for the Hoosiers. Number two in the Big Ten. The final nine seconds. Calderwood from the launching pad. Kowski hits the side of the backboard. And this one is going in the books, favoring the Indiana Hoosiers. So Bobby Knight's Indiana Hoosiers will win their 18th game of the 1999 season. They are 5-5 five and five in the Big Ten, and Dick Bennett will have to wait a yet another day before his 20th win in 1999. 71-60, that's our final score. I'll be back with John with our final thoughts coming up after this. So the Indiana Hoosiers never trailed. They win it by 11. They have the Boilermakers of Purdue coming in here Tuesday. We're back after this. So as they put this one in the history books, 71-60, the Indiana Hoosiers win their 18th game of the 99 season, and the Wisconsin Badgers going to 19-4. and And you really have to take your hats off to uh, the Indiana Hoosiers, obviously playing at home, so you give the Hoosiers the edge, but Wisconsin never got into their game tonight, John. Yeah, it was a, a really the offensive-defensive battle, and Indiana won it. They averaged 75 points a game. They scored 71 tonight. And so Indiana's offense was better than Wisconsin's defense. And, of course, uh, Sean Mason stepping up in the second half before fouling out. But you look at Ty Calderwood and the, the, some of the other Badgers, they just never got into the groove. And, again, you have to attribute that to uh, Indiana defense. Right. It took too long for Calderwood and Mason to both get started. They need to do that in the first half, kind of set the tone for the game. They finally did get going, but it was a little too late. Indiana answered the call at the two-minute mark. Wisconsin had a chance to get the lead uh, under four, and Indiana held them on the defense. All right, Mr. Laskowski, let's take a look at our key play of the game brought to you by Key Bank. Uh, help at every turn. Usually expect a basket or a rebound, but the key play of the game was this Mason shot. He missed it, tried to make up for the missed shot with a steal. There you see, he backs away from Gladness, but now he comes right back to Lewis and commits his fifth foul. He's their leader, needs to stay in the game. So a smart play by Lewis, and that's the key play of the game. And at that juncture, it was 65-60 Indiana by five. If he hits the triple, it's 65 to 63. So a frustrating play for Sean Mason. Now, Dick Bennett, what's he saying to his team in the locker room? Now they're 19 and four, but it snaps a seven-game winning streak. Well, it's interesting. I talked to Dick this morning. He said, "We know we lost those first two games. When are we ever going to win a Big Ten game?" And uh, they go right up to Michigan State. At, uh, Michigan State comes in and they beat them. And that started the seven-game run. Confidence is high. Things are going well. And now all of a sudden they lose to Indiana. You think, ooh. How are we going to finish this thing out? This is a turning point for Wisconsin now the rest of the way. But as you know better than anybody, the Hoosiers winning 89% of their games here in Assembly Hall in this decade. Right now, it's time to announce our power play, a player of the game, brought to you by Synergy PSI, where energy comes to life. Rob Turner, averaging five points a game, sets the tone early in the first half, ends up with 22 points, 8 of 11 from the field. He cuts right through the zone on the out-of-bounds play and lays that one in. He was the difference in the game for Indiana. Now, Turner winds up with 22 points, so we're going to try to talk to Mr. Turner when we come back. There's the final numbers. The Indiana Hoosiers uh, keep it going. Back-to-back -back wins, 71-60 over Wisconsin. We're back after this. A senior, one of only two seniors on Indiana's team, averaging five points a game, a great game, 22 points. Just like playing uh, in your former days, in high school days, scoring lots of points. You like that, don't you? <laughs> yeah, it was a good feeling tonight. 
Now talk about the preparation. You know uh, that Wisconsin was going to be a good defensive team. They were going to look for uh, how to shut off Guyton and Wrecker, and he has two leading scores. Bob Knight gets you the start. What kind of feeling does that give you, knowing you're going to have to come through with some points? Uh, it gave me a good feeling. Uh, I know that um, AJ and Luke is going to get handled pretty much, so I had to. I know how to step it up, so I'll try to do that. Now, one of the things that uh, Indiana, I think, had the advantage was Wisconsin's not a big team, so Bob Knight could go to a four-guard offense. That's what let you in there. But on the defensive end, that can cause some problems because you'll have to guard a bigger guy. <laughs> yeah, I took it as a challenge tonight, and I just came out and, you know, tried to do my part. Now, the secret to being a scorer is you got to make that first or second shot and get going. Talk about that feeling when you hit that first shot. It really just makes you look for the next one a little easier, doesn't it? Yeah, it really does. Um, I just try to focus on that, and as soon as I hit that one, I just wanted them to come back to me again, and I just, you know, do what I do best. Now, I know at Indiana, when you win a game, you don't get to see a lot of, of, of your film, but here's some tape of you on hitting, uh, on hitting some shots. Talk about the uh, uh, the difference and you're trying to score do you like shooting the three-point shot better or would you rather try to do it off the drive i'd rather do it off the drive because i can um, come in and i can hit the small shot or i can dish it off to one of my teammates mm -hmm. uh, let's talk about the big ten tournament that's going to be coming up here uh the beginning of march when you guys will get a chance to probably make up for some of the games you probably thought you'd let get away in the first part of the big season the big ten season in fact the tournament started today you would end up playing wisconsin well, what are players thoughts as you, as you go to the big ten tournament uh, we're just getting ready for it now. We know we struggled, you know, in the first part of the Big Ten season, so we're just going to try to come out and just get ready for this tournament. Mm -hmm. Now, Purdue's coming in next Tuesday. Of course, a uh, rare victory for Indiana. They went up to Mackey Arena early this year. They, they, uh, they, uh, Hoosiers defeat uh, Purdue up at Mackey Arena. Now they're a little uh, coming back here trying to steal that one away. What are some of the challenges Purdue faces, uh, you face when you play Purdue? Uh, we're just going to try to come out and just, just try to handle them like we did up there. Now, I think uh, the schedule really favored uh, Indiana in the second part. You played six of your first nine games on the road, and of course it's always tough on the road, but five of the last seven uh, are at home. Does the team uh, really look like they can run the rest of the way? They got to go to Wisconsin, they have to go to Northwestern and Illinois for the only road games. The rest of the games are home. Does that build your confidence knowing you got a lot of home games and you're going to try to run the, uh, uh, the rest of the Big Ten season without a loss? Yeah, I'm saying we get a lot of support here, so we're going to try to come out and uh, continue what we did tonight. <laughs> Seemed like on a couple of possessions when the game got close, the crowd stood up. But uh, you guys can hear that on the floor, can't you? Yeah, it's, it's a good feeling. All right, great game. Congratulations on the victory. Rob Turner for the Indiana Hoosiers. We'll have more when we come back. It's the final. Indiana 71-60, and that's going to be it for Mike Gleason. This is John Laskowski. Good night from Bloomington. Controlled the game the whole way and able to stop that Badger rally with two minutes to go. Indiana moves to 5-5 five and five in Big Ten play. The Ellenberger Report is brought to you by Steak and Shake, famous for steak burgers. Now let's go courtside to Ted Kitchell and Norm Ellenberger. Well, Coach, congratulations on a, a well-fought victory out there. Uh, you know, the last two games, we, we've, we've won both of them, and both of them quite different tonight. Uh, that good old-fashioned tough basketball got to play on both ends, and Indiana did a pretty good job of it. Yeah, all I got to do is ask AJ. Yeah. <laughs> you know, he he couldn't uh, he couldn't buy one tonight for a while. He finally there at the end got a couple, and and uh, that just shows uh, represents right there how different this ball game ball game was. I tell you, it has been uh, walking on eggshells here for the last last two days. Coach Knight hit hit the ground off of that uh, off of that big win and did not allow anybody to to even think about Penn State. It was just as soon as we got in town, it was Wisconsin, Wisconsin. And he he really had his team ready. I mean, he had he had us ready on both ends of the court and uh, they, they carried over not only what we were trying to do physically and in, in the play, but they carried over his his attitude onto the court. And that made us really tough tonight. Well, you tried uh you know, experimenting with the uh, the smaller lineup in the overtimes at Penn State tonight in the pregame show, you mentioned that you were going to go with the smaller lineup. You inserted Rob Turner, and uh, he really stepped up and had a heck of a game for Indiana. Well, uh, Coach felt that you had to do something against their defense. I mean, they they come here throwing uh, throwing goose eggs at people, you know, and with a 50 point average or whatever it is, and you know, we we poked some holes in that, which was kind of neat. And and one of the main reasons was that was that we we uh, had Wrecker in in there where they they had to guard Wrecker with a bigger guy, 
and uh, and then Turner, of course, stepped right up, uh, realizing that that AJ was going to have a tough time because that they've got good defense on him, and and that the, uh, 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 Turner had to come in and score, and he and he really met that. In fact, coach just just mentioned it here just before he came out. He said the game really belonged to the everybody that played in the first half because they put us in a position uh, uh, to win and and uh, that was you know certainly on the defensive end but a lot of that was on the offensive end yeah they really set the tone uh, Wisconsin you know right away found out that nothing was going to come easy talk a little bit uh, about Rob Turner Did, I mean I mean is I'm sure a lot of people wonder why doesn't he play more minutes I mean you obviously you know have a probably a, a, or know why uh, is it does he does he fit in against some teams better than he does others uh, he fits into himself sometimes better than he, than he does at other times, and he doesn't bring that game all the time. Uh, the, uh, learning to play and adapting to play at Indiana, uh, he didn't have much of a background uh, from whence he came in the JC and the high school that fit in here, other than a great body <clears throat> and Billy to jump and a, uh, and a basketball Benny that just loves to play. And uh, uh, he's he's getting better. He's getting better all along, and uh, I think that he just needs to play more. And, and feel relaxed out there. And he uh, certainly off of tonight, uh, who's to say that we won't be playing a smaller lineup most of the way now? Well, you sure had a, an outstanding game. Talk a little bit about William Gladness. William did not get the start tonight. Haston started. He obviously screwed up on a defensive assignment about the first time down the floor. He was out. Gladness came in. But you talk about preparing yourself, being ready to go in the game no matter when you go in. He came in. He had nine rebounds at half, and he probably had six or seven more. I mean, he had to end up with 15 or 16 rebounds. He was really playing big inside for you. Well, Hasten, Hasten opened the door for him. You know, they have, they have a play where Vershaw gets the ball out there about 15 feet from the bucket, and then they back cut on the other side. And that uh, whoever the defensive man there has to cover that. And, uh, well, Hasten played one minute, had one shot one for one, <laughs> had two rebounds, had a, had a great stat line. He did. And then, and, then, and then didn't get back in until uh, you're about ready to turn the lights out. So, <laughs> uh, but see, that's 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 Hastings. I mean, he he he's just a big old slow, easygoing guy, and and uh, you, you know you got to light a fire under him sometimes. So you, you go to the bench, and wow, what what do you get? You get nine nine boards, uh, a good defensive play out of gladness, and then he continued right on to the second half. Let's go to Great Clips, brought to you by Great Clips with over 40 Indianapolis locations. The other night, A.J. Guyton ended the game with a three, and uh, let's take a three, look at a three right here tonight. Oh boy, he didn't have many. He, he, had, uh, he had some touches from three and four feet. That one, that one was, was late, like you said, but he had, he had some, some shots that were, it would dip clear down in and touch the, touch the, uh, the net, and then it would cough back out tonight. He had a heck of a tough time. And then there was an awfully big play here at the end where Michael Lewis used his head and was able to foul out Sean Mason, their best player. Well, Coach, uh, Coach put Haston in to, um, uh, so that uh, they would have to put Mason on Wrecker. And, uh, and we wanted to get him out. And, of course, Lewis, Lewis pulled an old Jasper trick on him. You know, they, he, he, uh, he, every now and then he'll reach back to his old high school days and, and Jasper him. And uh, that's, well, when you get Jasper, <laughs> when you get Jasper, that's, uh, that's really tough. <laughs> Well, obviously, uh, you know, th this is, th th <laughs> I, I don't know. <laughs> I th th I anyway, this is an awfully big win for this team tonight. I mean, w Wisconsin's a very solid basketball team. Uh, they, they've, they've had a lot of big wins. Is this team able to take this win and continue moving step by step up that ladder that coach works on as the season goes on? Well, we better, you know, it's certainly not going to be any fun the rest of the way for anybody if you don't, um, you know, not, uh, I think the Minnesota game helped us, even though we got tired and lost it, and and then that last one over on the road there at Penn State, and then this one tonight. You know, you gotta you gotta hope somewhere along the line we'll get a get some momentum going and and get up on top of the thing, and uh, this is a step in the right direction. We, With this outfit, though, what what happens tomorrow is uh, <laughs> who knows. Well, you got a lot of road games coming, up, or I mean, a lot of home games coming up, and uh, the Boilermakers come in next. I'm sure after the whooping uh, they got up there, uh, that they'll be they'll be really ready to play. So. Uh, you get them ready. Well, Coach Katie will have his outfit ready. To, you know, any time they come in here, that's for sure. And, but uh, if this is any indication, we'll be all right, too. All right, Coach, thanks for coming out. Back to you, Les. All right, we come back. We'll give you the final stats, and we'll announce our super sub of the game. And Wisconsin falls to 7-3 and three in the Big Ten. Time now to review our fueling factors. Brought to you by Fast Max. If it's got to be fast, it's got to be Max.
Well, for Wisconsin, uh, we talked a little bit about team defense and also getting to the line. Uh, I thought their team defense was excellent. Indiana did a nice job. They worked extremely hard in their offense. I, th I thought they did the best job I've seen them do as far as cutting, uh, you know, screening, back cutting, and do doing a lot of things without the basketball. But still, the defense that Wisconsin plays is very, very good. Getting to the line, I'm sure Coach Bennett was not real happy. Uh, they didn't get the ball down inside as much as, the, as they would have liked, taking advantage of their height situation. And because of it, they did not score many points in the second half from the free throw line. For Indiana, Guyton and Wrecker, obviously very, very important. Uh, even though they didn't lead in scoring, Rob Turner was the leading scorer tonight. Still, they were very active, as, as we talked about just a second ago, in, in the offense. And by them being active, that created a lot of openings for Rob Turner. Uh, also inside, Gladness, I thought, just had a wonderful game. And that's the, the, the second factor, rebounding. Uh, you know, William Gladness probably had half of the 32 rebounds. And uh, like I said, he came in off the bench after about one minute. He was ready to play. He got, about, he got the rebound about the first four times it went up on the board. Uh, he just really had himself ready to play and, and, and really had a wonderful game. You know, re really giving somebody inside that Indiana could count on when the ball went inside. Indiana leads the game the whole way. Uh, Got to within four with, uh, or five with two minutes to go. Indiana held its own. Let's see how they did it now as we go to the Union Federal stats. Brought to you by Union Federal Savings Bank. All your banks should be. Well, I think the things that really stick out, uh, you know, you know let's, let's remember about Wisconsin. They came in here, opponents were only shooting 40% and only scoring 50 points against Wisconsin. Indiana goes for 52% tonight and scores 71 points. So it was an excellent offensive output by Indiana. 43% shooting by Wisconsin. That's not really that far off of what they usually do. You can see the free throw situation. Obviously big. I'm sure uh, Coach Bennett not very happy about that. 21-2 to two, Indiana. In the, even, even though Indiana only shoots 57% from the line. 12 of 21. Three-point field goals about the same. Rebounds Indiana. Quite a big edge, uh, you know, out-rebounding out Wisconsin by seven. The turnover still very, very impressive. Wisconsin didn't shoot a very good percentage, but still only turned the basketball over eight times. So in the last, uh, three, in the last three games, they've turned it over, I think, 22 times. That, that's very impressive, only turning it over about seven times a game. Indiana with only 10. Excellent job of ball handling by the guys out front. Bench points, you can see Indiana leads that. But I thought Michael Lewis really did a nice job out front controlling things defensively and offensively handling the basketball for Indiana. All right, now let's take a look at our crunch time totals brought to you by Rachel's Gourmet Potato Chips. And there was crunch time tonight. As Laz mentioned, uh, Wisconsin got within four with about uh, three minutes to go. Down the stretch, Indiana did an outstanding job uh, rebounding. They were able to get to the free throw line. You see they outscored them 7-2, to rebound 6-4, to four, and uh, Indiana able to bring the victory home. Now it's time for the sub of the game, brought to you by Subway, the way a sandwich should be. Well, there's that guy we talked about, William Gladness. He only had eight points. Uh, I, I gave him a few too many rebounds. It seemed like he had more rebounds than that. It was an excellent play by Michael Lewis, throwing it up, Gladness going and getting it. But I think the most important thing is here he didn't start the basketball, basketball game. He's been in the doghouse a little bit. Yet with about 30 seconds gone in the game, you know, Hastings comes out, he goes in, and, uh, you know, he ends up being the player of the game. He just did an outstanding standing job uh, being the superstar. But yeah, you know, I mean, two guys can't win a basketball game. Um, you know, those two guys can come as close as any two can, but uh, no two guys can win the game. And uh, when those two guys were out, uh, you know, our game plan, we wanted to use a lot of guards and try to wear their guards out. Um, and so we knew we were going to be in that position, and when those two were out, uh, you know, we just got to continue to to really work our offense and and really get all five guys into the motion instead of just two or three cutters, and uh, you know that's what we did, and that, we got some some pretty good shots that way. Mike, talk about the play where you fouled out uh, Mason. Well, we knew uh, the time before that on offense, um, Record had a drive and got blocked, and we knew Mason had four fouls and and he was guarding Record. We wanted to try to give him his fifth because he was killing us on the offensive end. And, <laughs> We got back on the other end. He went for a steal, and I knew he was going to be coming back. I knew he had four fouls, and uh, I just tried to step in front of him. If he fouls me, he fouls me, and he's out of the game. If not, you know, we go down and play offense. But uh, he had his momentum and just fell over my back. So uh, it was good to get him out of the game. Talk about the six days off now in preparation for Purdue. You guys tend to play better when you play more frequent, but now you've got six days off. Is that gonna, how's that going to affect you? Well, I don't think it's going to affect anything going into Purdue. Um, you know, Purdue's going to come in here ready to play after losing at home. They want to come back and, <clears throat> you know, get a win, get some revenge. But, uh, you know, anytime you're playing Purdue, I don't care if you're playing, if we play them tomorrow, 
you know, it's, it's, uh, you know, it's the biggest rival. You can't say anything else more about it, and both teams will be ready to play. Does it give you any more satisfaction to be I really, really like to watch Wisconsin play. I mean, they they play, they're, they're extremely well coached, uh, and they play, uh, they don't make mistakes. I mean, here, they got beat in a game tonight and I think had eight turnovers, and, and we did a pretty good job. I think we had 10 maybe, and and uh, they, uh, they play the hell out of the defense. They make you work for everything you get. Uh, and and really play it, it, the best team of all is a team that plays within itself and they really do that uh, I felt throughout the whole second half until uh, we were ahead 64 53 and that meant that at that point we had maintained our uh, our halftime uh, margin which is I think always good you want to you want to Ex, uh, expand on a little bit uh, and uh, we didn't uh, although I think what we get up 13 maybe I don't know if we're ever 14 ahead but we were 13 ahead I think and and uh, then Wisconsin scores seven in a row so now it's 64 60 and <clears throat> I think that point at 64 60 was about as good a point from then on as we've had all season we, we're we're at a in a position where things are going away from us. Uh, we've had a lead. Uh, no lead is ever comfortable with a three-point shot, but we had a lead, um, and it's gotten away from us. And, and now I, I thought from that point on, uh, our defensive play was, was very good. Uh, we got the ball off the board, um, and, and we made, made a few points. Missed, a, missed some free throws. We were only 12 for 21 from the foul line, but it's nice to to uh, shoot 21 uh, after having shot just 11. So, and I'm sure Wisconsin will wonder how the hell they only shot two. Uh, I mean, I probably would be if I was Wisconsin. Uh, but be that as it may, it, it was a very, very uh, good game uh, for us. I think uh, uh, good basketball. Uh, uh, Gladness uh, really played the boards well. Uh, did a Pretty, a pretty good job defensively. Uh, had four assists on uh, on top of that. Uh, it wasn't a great offensive game uh, for either Wrecker or Guyton, but they did a lot of things. They, they each made uh, plays when we had to have them, uh, and they both did some things at, uh, at both ends of the floor uh, that involved things other than, uh, than putting the ball in the basket. I mean, we've had a couple of games where they put the ball in the basket uh, and, and we haven't played very well. So it was nice to see um, them do some things that really helped us win other than, uh, than scoring. And then I thought that, uh, save Rob Turner for last, I thought Rob Turner got us off to a really good start and, and coming in and out of the game, which is what, uh, how we've used him basically all along. He just did something every time he came in the game. He got a rebound, he, he got a basket, he made a free throw. Uh, so I was really, really tickled for him. He's a kid that I mentioned a long time ago that, that uh, I just wanted to have as, as good a year as possible, and this certainly was a great game for him. And that brings us to the current Big Ten standings. You see Wisconsin drops to 7-3 and three and gives Michigan State two up in the loss column. And look at Indiana. They now move up to the middle of the pack, 5-5. Five and five. And then they'll take on Purdue at three and four. It's on quite Tuesday. a big jump from where they were two games ago. They were uh, down there, pretty far down. Uh, Let's look at Indiana's upcoming schedule. As we mentioned, they're going to play at home against Purdue next Tuesday. Then on Saturday, the uh, 13th, they travel up to Northwestern. Two more home games. Not a bad schedule coming into the Big Ten tournament. Not too bad. You're going to get a lot of home games. But anybody that thinks that at Northwestern is going to be an easy game, they're very wrong. Because no Northwestern was a very good team here, and they'll be even that much better in Evanston. All right. For Ted Kitchell.